purpose of these videos is to orient you to what components look like and how you act on them. As you read in Chapter 5, variable values are factual characteristics about the units of an analysis that can be linked to documents or codes. In this video, we show you what variable values look like, different ways of creating them, and some of the actions that can be taken on them. Variable values can be associated with either documents or codes and can be accessed either by right-clicking in the document or code system or from the variables main menu. For example, if I right-click on a code, I have the option to gain an overview of variables. Equally, if I right-click on a document group, then I can get an overview of variables or on a particular document, I have the same option. What I'll do now though, is go to the main variables menu and have a look at the list of document variables. We can see that we've got three groups of document variables. The red ones are system variables that MaxQDA creates automatically for you to store factual information about the documents. For example, which document group they're in, when they were created, the total number of coded segments, etc. The variables here, which are blue, are variables that have been created by you, the user. So in this project, we've created the variable gender to specify whether documents are containing material from male or female respondents, the age of the respondent in each document, and various other characteristics. And the green variables are variables that have been created out of codes, and I'll talk about those later. First of all, let's go and have a look at the data editor view, and now we can see that we have one row per document. So here's Teresa's document, and we can see all of the variable values in the cells. The column headers are the variables themselves, gender, life satisfaction, age, are the user defined variables. If I want to change the value of a variable, then I can double click and I can choose one of the options uh, from the drop down menu here, or indeed I can just type in a new value as required, and that then becomes available for the next option. As well as creating variable values manually within MaxQDA, we can also import them from a spreadsheet. Having specified the variable values that relate to documents, we can now act on them in various ways. A key way is to activate documents based on the presence of a variable value. So for example, I can ask MaxQDA to activate by document variables, and I can choose, as I have here, the variable value male, and when I ask to activate, it just activates all of the documents that have been associated with that variable value. And now any other interrogation that I do will be focused just on that set of documents. So when I open up my retrieved segments window, I'm now only looking at coded segments for the education code that are focused on male documents. You may have noticed when I activated by document variables that there's an option here to activate and create a set. So what I'm going to do this time is to ask for not just the men, but the men who live in New York using the AND operator. And when I activate and create a set, then it will not only activate those documents, but it will automatically create a set of the documents that satisfy both the criteria that I asked for. In other words, activate and create a set out of documents that have the variable value male and New York applied to them. Another way that we can act on variable values is to use them in a comparative interrogation. There are several options. I'll show you a cross tab now. So I'm going to activate codes, choose the cross tab option, and this time I'm going to focus on the variable values for different levels of education. 
And what I now have is a comparison of the codes that I activated related to day-to-day -day issues, looking at how they occur in documents that have been associated with different variable values relating to levels of education. In the normal way, this cross-tab visualization is fully interactive. So when I double click on any one of the intersections in this cross-tab view, in the retrieve segments window, I'm able to see, read and interpret the data at each intersection. There are various other ways that we may act on variable values and everything I've shown you in relation to document variable values is also possible with variable values applied to codes. But hopefully this video has given you an overview and a flavour of the sorts of actions that can be taken on variable values.